How do I know what kind of system I have? Okay, so that's a question that I get asked a lot, and it actually helps us as technicians uh, kind of know what we're dealing with. So one of the first things I like to ask is, uh, especially in heating, but you know, even, even in air conditioning, it's good to know kind of what to expect when I show up. Uh, it also helps me know how to diagnose the system. If I can get a little information about how it's working, uh, maybe what's not working, anything that they've noticed, because sometimes problems happen intermittently. Uh, I actually ran in, into a, a problem not long ago that as soon as you show up, it doesn't do it, right? That's the way it always works. And so uh, I have to go off the customer's feedback and I kind of have to educate them to the point that they can be my, my eyes and ears because they're there all the time. And so I told them what to watch for, what to expect, um, if it does this, this is a problem. If it does this, this is normal. Sure. Uh, and so that's kind of what we're gonna do today. But you know, yeah, just knowing what you have. And so air conditioning wise, there's really two basic configurations uh, or three. Uh, you can have a package system, which is where you have everything outside. You only have an outdoor unit. It's pretty large. Um, you know, you, you've got this large, you know, large unit outside versus this. And so it doesn't look as familiar as you know the common split system it's more of a, a large scale unit uh, those units are everything packaged in one box uh, these are pretty common in mobile homes uh, even in homes a lot of times you'll put those in, in places where you can't get under the house you don't have good access you know, they don't have a good attic space or a good crawl space uh, and, and sometimes people put them in for a, var a variety of reasons and sometimes they get put in places that honestly they shouldn't but the best application is for places that are tight. You don't have a closet, you don't have an attic, you don't have a crawl space that's big enough to house the outdoor unit or the indoor unit. And so you put in a package system so that everything's outside except the ductwork. And so a package system actually pipes the duct, the air to that unit. And so it has duct fittings on it. These, this doesn't. So this sits outside. Uh, a package unit would sit outside and it would have air actually coming to it. This doesn't. Uh, so that's a little different system. Uh, probably the most common is the split system, which is what we have here, where you have the air handler or the air handling unit. Um, some people call it the furnace, but eh, that can be uh, a term that we may uh, use for other things, but it has heating capabilities, but it's mainly there to move air. Uh, so it handles your air. So it has a return, it pulls air from the house. We talked in the last segment, and then it blows air into your house. And in the summer, it's pulling in warm air, removing the heat, blowing in the air into your house that has the heat removed from it. And so it's essentially just pulling that heat out as we go. Indoor unit could be located under the house, could be located in the attic, could be located in a closet, could be in a basement, um, could be, yeah, let's, yeah, that's the basic spots. Yeah, um, I've seen them in some pretty unique places, but for the most part, that's it. So uh, a lot of times people don't even know where that unit is located. Uh, they don't even know they have a second unit because they don't see it. It's out of sight, it's out of mind, it's under the house, they've never been under there. Uh, maybe they change their filters from inside the house and so they never have to, to go under or in the attic. Uh, they don't even know there is another one. So when you say, where is your inside unit? They are like, I didn't know that I had one. Uh, so usually there's a good indication if you're trying to figure out what type of system and what type of duct system you have, maybe where it's located. I always go by the ductwork. Where are the vents? Um, if I walk into a house, the vents are in the ceiling, then probably it's either in the closet and it's blowing up into the attic or the unit itself is in the attic. If they don't know where that unit is, it's probably not in the closet because it's in a closet, they've seen it. Uh, so if the, the vents are in the ceiling, usually you can start there. If the vents are in the floor, it's probably in your crawl space. If you have a basement, it's probably in your basement. So that's kind of the basic location. So yeah, if uh, if you're looking around your house, trying to figure out where that unit is located, that indoor system, uh, start paying attention to those. Uh, find that because that way, if you have a problem, you know where to look. Uh, you know what's normal and what's not. But just look for those vents. Where are they blowing? Uh, the other configuration would be a gas furnace that has central air conditioning as well. But essentially, for the air conditioning purposes, it's going to be the same setup. Uh, you've got an outdoor unit, you've got some sort of coil mounted on that furnace, and you know, it's blowing air into your house just the same as that does, it's just kind of doing that a little bit different. So I think here in a minute we'll actually look at a system that's set up that way, yes. that has a coil on a furnace. Um, 
So anything you want to add? Uh, uh, other than maybe if, if, as far as the split system goes, if you see the copper lines running from out the inside, then you yeah. have a, you have a split system. Yeah. Um, other than that, and if your unit runs, if you notice your outdoor unit running in the winter, then most likely you, or definitely you have a heat pump okay. system. Yeah. That's one question I do get a lot is, yeah. does a heat pump also, especially someone who doesn't have a heat pump and you're going to put one in, or you're suggesting that they install one, yeah. uh, does the heat pump also do air conditioning? Yes. So what yeah. would you say to that? Yeah, absolutely. It's going to do both. It's just in the winter. Um, it will shift directions of how that refrigerant flows. And so, yeah, in the summer, you're gonna have cooling and it will provide heat uh, in the winter as well. And especially using the same process in the winter without yes. going too deep. Yeah. Indoor unit in the summer, colder, gets colder, picks up heat from the house, removes it, rejects it outside. In the winter, they switch places, the refrigerant switches oh, directions, yeah. the outdoor unit picks up heat from outside and it rejects it in your house. Yes. Pretty simple. Very straightforward. Yeah, at least on the surface. Should I change my thermostat or should I leave it at a consistent temperature? I would leave it at a consistent temperature. Find what you like and just kind of try to ride that out. That's my opinion. Um, I know what I did in kind of helping with that is I did a lot of ceiling fans in my home and then that way the, we can kind of turn those on and off. If there's an issue, we start cooking, it gets a little bit warm, you can turn the ceiling fan on, move some air around. And that way I'm not kind of fidgeting with the uh, thermostat that much. Me personally, I, I like to leave mine just right where it's at. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm in the same camp. Uh, yeah. I, I'm of the opinion, especially with a heat pump system, that especially in the winter, uh, which we're, not, we're not talking about that as much now, but if you have a heat pump system, they're made to keep up with the load that's in the house. Yeah. They don't have the ability, especially in the winter, to make up a lot of ground uh, without costing you extra money. Yes. You know? So uh, it's really better just to leave it in my opinion. Now, there are some thermostats on the market. Uh, we will do a segment on thermostats to where we we dig into some different types, uh, smart stats and programmable thermostats, and uh, the Nest and those types of stats that are learning, uh, they're smart, they have the ability to, to turn their self up and down as, you're, as you leave the home. Uh, they have motion sensors, and, uh, they go off of your phone's location, they use a, uh, something called geofencing. That, you know, when your cell phone gets within so many miles of the house, it knows that you're coming home, and it kicks it down a few degrees. And then as you leave, it kicks it up a few degrees. So uh, definitely some interesting technology there. Uh, we do it a little bit of pretty neat time for that, but we have, uh, you know, I have my thermostat on my phone uh, so that I could change it. I don't change it a lot. I'll even say it, I, I like mine on, everybody has their number. So in the comments, it would be interesting to see, like what is your desired temperature in, in your house? Because we get some pretty wide ranges, uh, 67, 68, all the way to 80. Yeah, um, I've seen yeah. homes in the winter that the customer likes it 80, yeah. uh, which is asking a lot of a heat pump to do that. So uh, normally, you know, somewhere between 68 and 75 is where most people land. Mm -hmm. What's your number? It's 74. Now that's not my number. That's her number. <laughs> <laughs> And sometimes it takes compromise, yes. Yeah, for sure. So uh, if you live in a home where you have one person that's comfortable at one spot, one person that's comfortable at the other, uh, I've been in a lot of homes to where they fight over the staff. And yeah. it's he turns it down every time he walks in, and she turns it up, or you know, vice versa. Uh, churches, uh, yeah. public places are really bad yes. for this, especially yes. churches, because you have a lot of people and everyone's comfortable at different spots. And so yes. how do you find that magic number? Uh, 73 miles, yeah. 73, 74, you're right. That, that was one of my pastor's biggest uh, things was he's like, he said, if I could get everybody in the congregation comfortable, he said, I'd be the best pastor in the world. <laughs> yeah, but so everybody's different. Point being, the, the, reason that, the reason that becomes a question too 
is there is a bit of a safety concern with the unit on and off often that is really going to uh, deteriorate the unit that that's going to make a shorter lifespan so even though there's some onboard safeties there to keep you from turning it on and off so often uh, which is an indication of how important it is, is they built safeties both into the thermostats and, and yeah, other things too. but and into the units too but um, that that on and off often can uh, shorten the life of the unit and that's one of the reasons why I like to say just just let it leave it alone, leave it, leave it alone. sometimes like there are studies and there is data out there that says if you turn your thermostat up a few degrees in the summer uh, while you're asleep then you can save some money at night uh, I'm more of a you know this is just personal opinion that for every degree I let it get away in the morning that's that many degrees I have to make up and so what I saved at night or what I saved during the day when I was gone at work I'm probably almost going to make up for when I try to get it back where I want it when I come home. Because everything in your home becomes the temperature because hot goes to cold and everything equalizes. And so everything becomes the temperature of the things around it. So if your home becomes 76 and you want it to be 73 by the time you get home, your furniture, your clothes, your floors, your walls, your ceilings, all of those things are 76. And so not only do you have to cool the air, but you have to cool down everything in that house. Uh, and so you know, it's, in my opinion, just leave it alone. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, if you have a smart stat and you have a program set in it, there are places and applications for a program. If you're a, a, a family that maybe has a very set schedule and you're gone a lot, maybe it would benefit you to, to set it back a few degrees. If you're in that church setting to where you're only in that church a couple of days a week yeah. and then the rest of the time it's sitting empty, don't turn it off because then you have mold and humidity issues. So not only is your system removing moisture, removing heat, it's also removing moisture. And so that's something we'll get into in another segment is how it actually dehumidifies your home. But yeah, in that, that church setting uh, where you have a place that's occupied and then unoccupied, uh, set it back a few degrees, that's fine, but I'd leave it on, uh, yeah, let, it, let it run a little bit. Speaking of that, I had a friend that thought, well, he would save as much money as he possibly could. So he just literally turned it off before he left in the morning. But when he returned in the evening and it would be nearly 90, if not 90 degrees, turn it back on. And when bedtime came, it was still too hot to sleep in the house. Yeah. And he did that a few times until he finally yeah. was like, well. And I'm of the opinion in that case, on. that's actually harder on your system. I think so. Running at those extreme yes. in inside loads and just leave it alone um, and honestly you have this system for comfort yeah. so one big question to close this segment up one question that i get a lot is maybe their old system your old system didn't work the way that you or maybe your current system doesn't uh, the way that you think that it should and is still affordable uh, especially in heating season a lot of times if your heat pump's not working like it should your heat strips end up making up a lot of the difference. And so they notice that on their bill, but instead of fixing the problem, they just turn the thermostat down. And so I've been in homes that they leave it on 60, 65, just to afford it. Yes. And, you know, so then when I put it in a new system or they have a new system installed by a contractor, they're saying, where should I leave it? You know, so that it's affordable. And my answer is always wherever you want it, because you bought this to be comfortable. You didn't buy it to save you money because no AC is cheaper than any AC. Yes. So if it's just to save you money, there's other ways to do that. You bought this to be comfortable within reason. You do want it to be efficient, but you you know put it where you want it yeah. and leave it. Yeah. Because if you're trying to do tricks to save a dollar, you'll end up losing that dollar somewhere else. So keep your house where you want it. It's better on your home. It's better on the building materials in your home that they stay at a constant temperature than this constant fluctuation of hot and cold, especially like homes with a lot of exposed wood, yes. uh, cabins. Uh, you know, yes. I've been in a lot of cabins to where you can tell yeah. there's been a lot of fluctuations. So uh, just put it where you want it and enjoy it because that's what it's there for. Thanks for watching another episode of Tech Check. Uh, I'm Matthew Watkins. I'm Adam Hawkins. And if we can help you out in your educational journey or Maybe just on your home system information. We'll be glad to help you if we can.
Hit us up in the comments if you've got any questions or uh, maybe you know an episode we ought to do. Yeah, give us some suggestions. We'll be glad to answer those questions.